Greetings, you mighty champion. I'm Pastor Glenn Curry, and we're looking at the wonderful story of redemption. An important part of the redemption story has not been accurately taught to you or most Christians in the world. And we're looking at what the Bible really says. What did Jesus mean when he said on the cross, it is finished? Was Jesus saying that everything that was required to redeem us was finished as he hung on the cross and died? Was Jesus saying that our redemption was complete and finished when he hung on the cross, cross and suffered and died? Uh, that's what we've been taught. Was Jesus saying that we now have victory over sin? We now have victory over that dirty dog, the devil, Satan, because of what happened on the cross? And by the cross alone, heaven is now our eternal home when we die physically. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Was Jesus saying that his suffering and physical death on the cross, now we have perfect right standing with the God of this universe. He's our heavenly father. Was Jesus saying that by what he accomplished, by him suffering and dying on the cross, we have a right to be born again, sons and daughters of God. We now have the very Zoe, that, that means the same life that God has that, that causes us to live forever and nature in us. Beloved, now are you the sons of God. That means sons and daughters. And we have the nature of God living in us that Jesus came to give us in John 10, 10. I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That's the God kind of life. The answer to all those questions is no. I will tell you what Jesus meant when he said it is finished in another lesson. The cross began the greatest trade of all times. It is where Jesus took our sins, carried them, was made sin. In exchange, he would give us his righteousness when he rose from the dead, 2 Corinthians 5.21. What really happened on the cross? I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to give you five things, and I hope that you're a good Bible student and writing these things down. Number one. Jesus was made sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, 2 Corinthians 5.21. Number two, Jesus carried the curse of the broken law for us, Galatians 3.13. Jesus, number three, Jesus nailed the harmful evidence that Satan had against us on the cross, Colossians 2.14. I'm repeating some of these things in each lesson because a repetition is a great convincer, and you need to be convinced by the Word of God what happened. Uh, Jesus was forsaken by God, cried out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Remember that in Matthew uh, 27, verse 46? That's number four. Jesus was forsaken like we were before we got born again. Number five, the sun was darkened. We can count that as something that happened uh, for a few hours, and the veil in the temple was rent from top to bottom, Luke 23, 45, from top to bottom, showing you it was a God thing that we now have access to God. Actually, something else happened that most Christians never even heard of. I'm going to say that's number six. When God turned off the sun for those few hours, it's got to be believed that Jesus carried all the deforming sickness and disease that plagued mankind because Isaiah 52 14 talking about the Redeemer says he was more marred than any man. Wow. You can drag a guy with a rope, drag him through the desert with a Jeep. He'll be jacked up at the verge of death. But Jesus was even more jacked up than that and alive. And God, the father turned off the sun because he didn't want you to see, didn't want anybody to see what happened. Number seven, important thing that happened on the cross. Jesus died. That began the additional stages of redemption necessary for us to be saved, and we're going to be learning about that. I will deliberately be repeating some of the various stages to you so that you see what happened on the cross compared to what happened during, our, uh, during the resurrection. Okay? And so there's various stages of redemption. Uh, throughout this teaching because the redemptive facts are so important and perhaps unlike anything you've never heard before because what you probably heard was the devil's defeated, we're born again, we're children of God, we'll live forever because of the cross. Hallelujah! 
repetition of what God says and what the Bible actually says is going to give us understanding of what really happened and the aha, revelation, knowledge. That's what God did. And it wasn't at the cross. So we're going to forever magnify Jesus for what he did at the cross and magnify the cross. But we're now going to learn the events that transpired after Satan tried so hard over all these years to keep us from knowing what happened after Jesus died that still needed to be completed for us to be uh, saved, a victory. Resurrection verses, okay. I've got some resurrection verses. Acts 4, 33. With great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of Jesus. Notice that it was with, that with great power of the resurrection of Jesus, not in the cross of Jesus. I think I told you this before, but in uh, Acts 4, verse 1 through 4, Peter preached about Jesus in Jerusalem, and 5,000 men believed and were saved that day because Peter was preaching about the resurrection. He was also preaching about hell, that Jesus went to hell. I'll tell you about all that stuff. In Acts 17, 1 through 3, it records that in Thessalonica, the apostle Paul preached about the suffering of Jesus and him being raised from the dead. So we automatically think the suffering of Jesus was on the cross. It was on the cross. But after he died, he had spiritual attacks that if you look at all the different translations of Colossians 2.15, you're going to be stunned. And that happened to Jesus, not on the cross, but in hell. The, the cross started the, the, the process, I'm going to say. And, G, and all the apostles preached about the resurrection, not the cross. You're, you're going to see that. And they had such amazing power. I told you, I think, in the last lesson, Acts 17, 6 says they turned the world upside, they were accused of turning the world upside down because of the power that they talked about in the resurrection. In Acts 17, 18, in Athens, Peter preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection with no record whatsoever mention of the cross. The cross is not even mentioned in the book of Acts. And that's 30 years. They didn't preach the cross. The word cross is not mentioned once in most of the letters to the churches. That's shocking, Pastor Glenn. Can that be true? You find out, get a Strong's Concordance on your app on your phone, and it will give you every word in the Bible and where it's located. It was the resurrection of Jesus that was magnified. Although preachers often say it, nowhere in the Bible does it say we can be born again, have everlasting life, have victory, defeat the devil because of the cross. It doesn't say that. The books that don't even mention the cross are Acts, Romans, 2 Corinthians, Thessalonians, uh, Titus, no, yeah, Titus, Timothy. They don't even mention the cross. Titus, Timothy, Philemon, James, Peter, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, uh, 2 Corinthians, uh, the book of the Revelation, the Apostle John, they didn't even mention the cross. That's pretty amazing. The, the word resurrection is mentioned 55 times in the New Testament to the churches. I think the cross is only mentioned 10 or 11 times and it was getting to the point that Jesus was resurrected. Remember, the things that are important to God, he says many times. The early church and the apostles magnified the resurrection of Jesus and what he accomplished through his resurrection with very little mention of the cross. Oh, well, there's only six books that even mention the cross. All the others, uh, Peter never mentioned the cross. Uh, I guess you could say, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree, I guess, 1 Peter 2.24. But anyway, James and John and th those guys, uh, Jude, uh, Titus, th those things never mention the cross. It was the preaching of the resurrection that the religious leaders hated and caused Peter and James and John to be jailed in, in Acts 4, verse 2 and 3. In the book of Acts and Romans, covered a period of more than 30 years. And there's no mention of, of G, Jesus on the cross. It's Jesus being raised from the dead. In Romans 1, 4, Jesus is declared to be the Son of God 
by the resurrection of the dead. Jesus is not declared to be the Son of God because he hung on the cross. And I've been telling you great things that occurred on the cross to help us. I'm not putting down the cross, but it's the resurrection that se separates Christianity from all others, all other religions. I'm Pastor Glenn. Keep, keep watching, keep learning, be teachable, praise God, and know some exciting, eye-opening things are to follow this lesson. Have confidence and strength that the resurrection is where you're made right with God. Please like and subscribe below. I love you. Make a great day.